Luke chapter 14 verses 25 to 35 is the scripture that we are looking at. And I'm going to, from this, from this scripture, what I'm going to talk to you about is requirements for a disciple. As we looked at this passage, can I ask you what stood out for you? How many parables did you notice there? There are three different parables that Jesus speaks or mentions over there and these three parables Jesus uses these three parables to focus on one particular aspect he's focusing on the aspect of being a disciple through these three parables we're going to look at three different requirements from these parables that Jesus mentions about being a disciple the first requirement that he mentions is that there is a cost to be a disciple and you read that first parable where he talks about the builder wanting to build a build a tower the second requirement that he mentioned mentions is that there is the strength of the disciple where he talks about the king entering into war, into war. The third thing that he mentions is the character of the disciple. And where do we find that? We find that when he talks about the, at the end, the last two verses. What is it talking about? It's talking about the salt. When we talk about discipleship, we often must understand many times we lead people up to the place of salvation. What is salvation? Jesus has died for my sins. And we, we often portray Jesus as this great savior. But Jesus calls himself, he says, we need to make him the Lord of our lives. We need to make him the Lord. And when you look in chapter 14 and you go home and you can read the chapter 14, there are two different settings here. 14, the first verse till the 24th verse, he is in a house and he's talking, he's talking to a, 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 to a group of people who are Pharisees and leaders among the Pharisees and he's talking to them and he's in a house setting, he's eating with them and he's addressing and again he's talking different parables. Now this 25th to the 35th verse, he is talking to the crowds that are following him. And, and, and the picture that comes there is a picture of these uh, of large numbers of people following Jesus because of his ability to provide or to be a savior to them. Whether it be at the home, the Pharisees invited him because the people all around considered him to be a savior. The crowds followed him because they accepted him and they understood him to be a savior. And to both of them, Jesus is telling that there is a requirement to move from a, being a crowd and to move from being a, a believer, to move from a place where you have, have this faith in the savior to a place where you begin to follow him and submit to him and make him your master make him your lord three questions that he asked jesus asked through this he uh, uh, with regard to these three things one he talks about the he addresses the matter of cost the second he addresses a, um, addresses a matter of strength and third he addresses the matter of character in these three parables the first thing that he addresses is a matter of cost and what is the question that he asked the crowd to ask can i pay it the second when it comes to the matter of strength do I have the strength for this matter? The third matter, when he talks about character, he asks, he makes the people ask a question. Am I fulfilling my purpose? Is my, is my purpose, the li my life purpose being fulfilled? And so when we, when, we address, when we address this, when we look at this matter, we need to look at that push both those uh, the first two parables in both those parables Jesus tells them one common thing he tells what does a builder do before he builds he asks he tells them the builder sits down to think to consider the cost to ask himself or herself a particular question the builder sits down and contemplates about the cost that is there the second he tells when he tells her about the king he says the king sits down and he begins to contemplate about the strength that he has to address the war that he has to face now now we're going to be looking at the three i just i just mentioned the three different three different parables and i mentioned what is jesus trying to address he's trying to address cost strength and character and we're going to just look at the three different things first thing he says you know, the cost to be a discipleship and the question is can i pay it we need to ask ourselves as we as disciples we need to ask ourselves can i pay this cost to be a disciple uh, and you look look at that portion of scripture the 28th verse to the third, uh, 28th and the 29th verse who is he talking about over there he's a builder he's he's a person who is building 
something entering into construction and what is he constructing he's constructing a tower you see the the, the beauty about beauty about jesus is that when he speaks parables he is making things very simple to explain a very profound a very deep matter and when we look at our own lives as a disciple god calls us to be a builder what does it mean to be a builder as being a disciple in first corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 and 11 it says as a wise master builder paul is saying over here speaking over here as a wise master builder he calls himself addresses himself as a wise master builder do you know why because he has sat down and he has asked the question can i pay for being a disciple and in fact we as we look at the story of paul he has undergone tremendous persecution tremendous persecution and in 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 view of all the experiences of being persecuted he says i am i call myself a wise master builder i have a question today to you what would you call yourself jesus says we are a, your a disciple needs to be a builder what would you call yourself would you call yourself a wise builder not master at least wise builder there's a story about there's a, the jesus gives another parable about a man two men who build who built their house and we know the song the children know the song in the in the sunday school what is it one person built his house on the sand and the other person built his house on the rock both of them they built a house but one one person was focusing on the being able to build it quickly the other person was be focusing on making a house that is sturdy to face all things and so jesus says listen you need to be a builder and what is your foundation first corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 to 11 what does he say as a wise master builder paul is talking about himself i have laid the foundation and another builds on it but let each one take heed of how he builds on it for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid which is jesus christ so he's paul is saying I am a wise master builder because I am my foundation is not my own ideas not my own thoughts not my own strength but my foundation is Jesus Christ and when you come to this parable what is Jesus saying that he's saying the 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 builder he builds a house but what does he do he spends so much of money on the foundation that he's left with no money for the house many times when we approach jesus we approach jesus like in this manner we focus so much on the foundation that we have no money no 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 ability to construct the building what does that mean once upon a time once upon a time i accepted jesus christ as my personal savior i said lord jesus come into my heart i am a sinner i confess my sins and i came to the lord and ran into the into the home where the father is waiting for the prodigal son and today i'm i'm in the house we laid the foundation the foundation is jesus but now what has happened now we do not have any we are, we are not even considering that there's a cost and there is a focus that needs to be paid upon building a building on this foundation jesus says there is a foundation and that foundation is jesus the name above all names the word of god that is that foundation cannot be changed but now what do we do paul says now i build this building with the raw material that i that i have in my own hands some of us have raw material as a straw some of us as raw material as gold whatever we have as raw material on the final judgment day it will be exposed before the fire of god laying the foundation is a is a starting pro- point but we need to progress from the foundation towards building the tower recognize the word the the the, the house that jesus is talking about here he is talking about a tower what is a tower a tower is especially during times of war when people enter into war that is when towers come and become a great necessity 
power for every believer we must understand even the next parable it's talking about war a tower we must always constantly understand that we are in a constant battle and as a and as a disciple we are always called to build a tower so that we can always have an is able to be able to see the enemy coming from afar now what does he say is this foundation what does he say this compares the ability of the builder to build the tower in the previous verses what does he say and he talks about relationship you have to you have to turn away from you hate your own father mother children brother sister and even your own life and it's a very very strong strong word when we build our christian life there needs to be a priority in our relationships what is a priority jesus is not saying neglect our parents neglect our brother neglect our sister because he's even speaking about our own life we are not called to neglect our life we are not called to neglect uh, or disrespect our family members or to disrespect the relationship but it is talking about priority we need to have first priority what is the first priority jesus says in matthew chapter 22 verse 37 what is the first and greatest commandment of all love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind the currency for building the tower is a place god has in our heart how do you construct the building you need a currency you need you need money to build the build, build this tower and what is the currency that you use the currency is the place the priority god has in my heart many times all these relationships have a greater priority over and above jesus in our lives uh bonhof a dietrich bonhof says cheap grace is a preaching of forgiveness without repentance baptism without church discipline communion without confession absolution without personal confession today we want forgiveness but we do not want to repent we want baptism but we do not want to be disciplined by a church we want communion but we do not want to confess before the communion table we want absolution but we want we do not want to have a personal confession before the lord the second thing that i want to second parable that i want to talk to you is about the strength of the disciple do i have the strength for it and the parable jesus uses is for he uses a parable of the of the king building a tower what are some of the aspects over there first thing that he mentioned it is a king as a disciple another position that we need to take is we need to take the position of a king who are we we are a royal priesthood we are the children of god our brother our elder brother is jesus because of that because of that as a disciple of jesus first and foremost i am a king positionally i'm a king what do we do as a king he says he enters into war and very interesting thing you look at that portion of scripture what how does he enter into war he will sit down and he will contemplate with my 10000 people can i fight against 20000 people the quantity that i have is very less the quantity that the enemy has is very much as a disciple we need to sit down and we need to ask this question do i have the strength for it as a king we need to ask ourselves do i have the strength for it do i have the strength to, to face a, a larger number of the enemy an enemy which is in a large number do i have the strength to face yes i do because jesus in in, in ephesians he says our fight is not against flesh and blood but against powers of darkness principalities and they are always they are always they look always greater in number you must understand when when lucifer was cast down into the into the earth he drew with himself one third of the angels one third of the angels that means what for every one angel he has god has how many You see for every one angel that he has God has two but many times we get afraid of the enemy's size and we get afraid of the enemy's numbers but what is Jesus saying here sit down think like a king think remembering that you are entering into war 
and what do you need to do in the 27th verse it says Luke 14 27 you need to bear your own cross and come after me and even in the 33rd verse he says renounce all that he has we need to renounce everything and we need to carry something carrying our own cross is not a suffering it is victory when the when when lucifer thought that he had defeated jesus through the crucifixion he was wrong because the cross enabled jesus to fulfill his purpose in life because of the cross Jesus is victorious over the enemy when we enter into war we must remember this as a king we must remember this as we enter into war that there is a cross that we carry in Matthew 11 28 to 30 Jesus says take my yoke and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light light there is a cross that we carry there is a burden that we carry but that cross that we carry the burden that we carry is always it's always it's always going to help us be victorious in every war the third thing that Jesus says is the character of the disciple. What is the question he asks? He says, am I fulfilling my purpose? And over there, he talks about two things. He says, one, he says, there is a, we have to understand that we are like salt. So he says, we need to understand like a disciple, we are a builder. Like, like as a disciple, we are like a, like a king. Now he says, we are like salt. Now this is, when we say salt, for us modern believers, we think immediately about food. But Jesus is not talking about food. He's talking about salt that can be used for soil or a manure, a fertilizer. What is he, what is he talking about there? You see, we know, when we think about salt, immediately food comes. He's not talking about, he's not talking about taste. He's talking about effectiveness. Matthew 5 verses 13, he says, you are the salt of the earth not food salt of the earth in the new testament times salt was used for soil what would they use the so, uh, the salt for they would put it in the soil what would happen in the soil the soil would begin because of the salt the little salt that comes in the soil the soil will get activated to produce new, to activate nutrients because of that the soil becomes good ground for seeds to grow second thing that the salt does is that the weeds because of the salt the weeds are unable to grow and so what is Jesus saying here he's saying listen you are the salt of the earth you are to be put into the soil so that you will be effective L let me just also talk about the manure pile what does salt do for the fertilizer or the manure pile when you put salt in the manure or the fertilizer it speeds up the decomposition and because of that now this fertilizer can be used on the soil so both both purposes the salt is basically for being able to produce a great harvest in the soil now what is a what is the soil Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 23 we talk about the parable of the sower and we there it talks about four different grounds right it talks about four different grounds it talks about the path it talks about a rocky ground it talks about weeds and it talks about a good soil four different grounds and we know the story very well and he says the sower went out, goes out and he throws uh, seeds into this path he throws seeds into the rocky soil he throws seeds into the weeds and he throws seeds in the good soil and the seed that comes on the good soil it brings forth great harvest what is this what is Jesus saying to us who are we we are the salt and where do we need to be placed we need to be placed in this hard earth we need to be placed in this rocky earth we need to be placed in this earth that has a lot of weeds what does that mean among people who do not know Jesus we are the salt of the earth when we are placed in their lives many times the Christian mentality is the moment I become a Christian I need to retract myself from everything and everyone no we are not called to retract we are called to invest we are called to be deposited into the soil we are called to be deposited in the fertilizer but now you know when the soil begins to become fertile you see the path what is wrong with the path 
is jesus saying because the path is bad don't plant in the path because the rocks rocky ground is bad don't plant in the rocky ground because the, because the weeds are there in the ground don't plant in the rocky in the weed, weeds no every farmer this is what every farmer will do every farmer in his plot of land if he has path if he has a rocky ground if he has weeds in his ground he will not waste any ground a foolish farmer will say i am not going to do the hard work i will only invest in good soil a good farmer will till the land he will break down the land he will put fertilizer into the land he'll pluck out the uh, pluck out the weeds in the land he will he will he will break the rocky ground why because that is a ground given to him what is a ground given to me what is a ground given to you my friends my family my colleagues my the people that i meet they are my ground and what do i what am i called to do as a character of a disciple what am i do what am i what am i doing i need to ask myself as a disciple am i fulfilling my purpose of being with these people when i am with these people they are hard ground their rocky ground needs to be broken so that that land will be be able to produce great fruit great harvest jesus says to the crowd who are being who have been calling jesus as savior coming behind him as a because of the food coming behind him because of because of the ability to provide healing and deliverance and all these miracles he looks at the large number and he says listen you need to ask these three questions first question can you pay the cost of discipleship do you have the strength to be a disciple third are you fulfilling the purpose of your the purpose that you're called to be as a disciple only when we answer these questions it is not so that we will he does not want the crowd to run away in the midst of all these questions he wants that the crowd will ask these questions and filter all the impurities from their life and in answer to these questions they will follow jesus Jesus called when he calls every disciple he says follow me follow me they all renounced everything they all cast aside everything and they began to follow Jesus the cost of discipleship is a hard thing the strength of our disciple the strength that is required for a disciple is a hard thing the purpose for a disciple is is a very very hard thing but in everything Jesus does not called us to be believers he does not call us to be simply believers he calls us to be disciples Shall we bow our heads for a moment? Shall we close our eyes? And I'll ask you these three questions as you go home. May this sermon not be just another sermon for you. You heard a good word. And you go away like the crowd saying, Wow, great words of wisdom. but rather you stay come draw closer to Jesus and you respond sit down and respond to these questions god do can i pay the cost god do i have the strength god am i fulfilling my purpose and in response to this questions that i ask myself and as i evaluate my life god i will begin to follow you all the days of my life into his hands we commit ourselves during this week we commit all these questions that we have asked into this into in the hands of the lord and we ask of you lord jesus that you would minister to us oh lord during this week that we will be able to be true disciples rather than flaky christians in jesus name we pray